Hello, Aria. Can you hear me? Well, yes. Uh, uh, before this, uh, I mean, my brother is not available today, so uh, okay. I guess I'll be eating the uh, the beginning prayer. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's pray and thank God for for the day, for waking us up, for taking care of us the whole day, and bringing us so far um into, into the day. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for everything that you, that you do for us. Thank you for waking us up today. Thank you for uh, bringing us to our work or our school and taking care of us. Thank you for always being with us, protecting us, sending your angels to 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 guard us and to look over us. Allah, thank you because you are always there for us. Thank you for protecting us, for protecting our families and every way that we know. Thank you for always being with us. Uh, we went and we came back. Nothing bad happened to us. You have always been with us. You protected us. Uh, you guided us throughout the day. We didn't. Uh, we didn't get sick. We didn't uh, fall to to do anything. My Lord, you have been with us. You have kept us safe. My Lord, thank you. Thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you for always protecting us. Thank you for always being with us. Thank you. Let's pray and ask God for forgiveness for um, everything wrong that we did, uh, every sin that we committed, either by by action, by thought, or um, in our words. Let's pray and ask God to forgive us and to wash us with the blood of Jesus. Let's pray. And I encourage you guys to also open your mics and, and pray with me. Let's pray. No, God. Oh, God. I want to pray right now. I want to ask that you please forgive me for my sins. I pray and I ask that you please forgive me for all my iniquities. Thank you, Lord God, for the things I've said, seen, heard, done, the ways in which I've acted that my glorify your name, Lord. I'm praying, Father God, and I'm asking that you just please me, cleanse me, Lord God. Lord God, I'm praying, I'm asking that you please. I know I am a sinner. I know God. I've done things that the Lord will pray for you so that we may connect with you, we may hear from you, and we may be in spirit and one accord with you this evening, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm going to pray. Thank you, God. Help us uh, live from those sins and, and get away from them. My Lord, thank you for giving your life so we may have forgiveness of sins. We thank you for, 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 for forgiving us. My Lord, thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Let's pray and uh, commit today's session into the hands of the Lord. Uh, we know that we cannot do anything without him. So uh, let's pray and ask him to turn his Holy Spirit to come and guide us, to come and teach us tonight. Let's pray. Lord Father God, I want to pray right now and I want to also ask that please send your spirit to come and guide us this evening. I pray and I ask your Holy Spirit down into our lives, Lord God, because we want to hear from you and want to learn from you, Lord. And all that we undertake today, all that we want to go through today, Father God, and we want to do it and learn from your bad, Father God, so that we may use it to better our walk with you and to better our going forward, Father God. We don't want to stray, so we pray more about you to understand it and make it change our lives, my Lord. Let us not leave this place the same way that we were when we came here. So let us come back to life tonight, my Lord. Yeah. Change your life and help us be better Christians. My Lord, thank you for everything that you do. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, I'm not going to leave the floor to God love. He's going to continue leading us in his um, preaching about how to, to walk with God. Good luck. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Uh, will you also be able to translate for us this evening? Um, sure. Okay, thank you. So who can remind us what we talked about last learned last Wednesday? Donc, qui peut nous rappeler de ce qu'on a appris euh, la semaine passée? Elam, if you don't mind just going ahead. Sure. Uh, last time we talked about how to walk with God. Uh, we talked about uh, how we have to um, be patient and, and wait for God's direction, not rushing in, into situations, but waiting for, for his guidance. 
thank you. So yeah, yeah like the, I'm sure the the rest of the people will uh, bring up, Charlie. Yeah. Um, Olivia, do you have anything to add? No, that's basically what I remember too. Trusting God and um, yeah, walking with Him and yeah, and then we also defined the word trust and then how we went about that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. How you? So yeah, so um, last week we outlined like marching with God and we went over seven points. Donc la dernière fois nous avons euh, parlé de comment marcher avec Dieu et nous avons parlé de de sept points. We talked about our walk depending and focused on God. And that's number one. Euh, nous avons parlé de notre marche qui dépend de Dieu. Number two, trust, perseverance, and endurance. Euh, deuxième, euh, deuxièmement, euh, la, la confiance, la persévérance, euh, la, la persévérance et, et l'endurance. Three, we talk about walking in completeness. Uh, troisièmement, nous avons parlé uh, de être complètement uh, en Dieu. Four, we talked about how we must die to ourselves in our walks. Uh, quatre, nous avons parlé de comment nous devons uh, mourir à nous-mêmes uh, durant notre marche. Five, we talked about obedience and complete obedience. Uh, Cinquième, nous avons parlé euh, de l'obéissance complète. Six, we talked about when to exclaim versus when to be silent. Euh, en numéro six, nous avons parlé de euh, quand, euh, quand s'exclamer et, et quand garder silence. And then in seven, we talked about community. Et septième, nous avons parlé de la communauté. And last week, I said this week, we're going to dive into one of these topics and talk about peace in our walks but throughout the course of the week i've been pushed to lead us in another sort of sense uh, et uh, la semaine passée j'avais dit que nous allons continuer uh, to uh, comment ma marcher avec dieu mais durant la semaine j'ai été poussé de continuer dans un autre sens so this week we're actually going to talk about some of the pitfalls in our walk uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you too. Okay. Uh, so this, why you yeah. just said? this week we're going to go ahead and talk about pitfalls. Like what okay. can prevent you from going continuing on in your walk? Okay, ça se peut nous en parler de de freins ou de empêchements qui pourraient nous empêcher de continuer notre marche avec Dieu. So we're gonna read a lot of verses and we're gonna talk a lot. But as we read last week in Second Timothy chapter four verse seven to eight, our walk is an ever continuous goal and we have to keep striving. It is not just something that we do. For a little bit of time, it's something that we have to do all the way until the end. Uh, donc, nous avons lu beaucoup de de versets. Uh, what was the first you said? As the last week we read, Second Timothy chapter four, verse seven to eight, which talks about uh walking continuation. Uh, donc, la dernière fois nous avons lu de Timothée quatre verset sept à à huit, qui a parlé de uh, la continuation de notre marche avec Dieu. And but today, what I want to focus on is this transcript that I read throughout the week, and I'm going to read it through one time, and then we're going to go back to it and um, analyze it. Mais durant cette semaine, euh, j'ai j'ai lu un papier et je vais nous relire ça. Nous allons lire ça une fois et nous allons euh, parler sur ça. Okay, so um, I'm going to read it one time through, and so if you guys can just pay attention real quick. So it's called If I Were the Devil from Paul Harvey, and he made this in about 1965. And essentially, he was prophesying the future spiritual condition of the world, and more specifically, the United States. Okay. And Donc, le, le livre s'appelle Si J'étais le Diable. Et ça parle de 
you said the spiritual situation of the United States. Oh uh, yeah, the world and specifically the United States of America. Okay. Et le papier parle euh, de la situation spirituelle du monde entier et plus précisément euh, des États-Unis. And after this, I'll recommend like everybody go and actually listen to the actual video again. But here we go. So it says, if I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness. And I'd have a third of its real estate and four fifths of its population. But I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree. You. So I'd set about however necessary to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with the campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whisper to Eve, do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confine that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And to the old, I would teach to pray after me, our father, which are in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors on how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves, until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions. Just let those run wild until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing. I'd have judges promoting pornography. Soon I could evict God from the courthouses, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbols of Easter an egg and the symbols of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd make those who have and get, I would take from those who have and give to those who want until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what do you bet I could get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich? I would caution against extremes and hard work and patriotism and moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. Paul Harvey. Again, this was said in 1965. Uh, and so after that first initial reading, what are some of your thoughts? What are, what are some things that you guys stood out to you guys? What are you guys thinking about after that first reading? Donc, que vous pensez, hein, de cette lecture? I think that um, it's very quite accurate to what's like going on, like the stuff in the school systems, um, like things we see on TV and how like, you know, people are getting influenced by that stuff too. Thank you. La femme a dit que elle, elle pense que ça s'appelle vraiment que euh, les gens voient les choses sur la télé et, et euh, ils se mettent à faire cela. Uh, anybody else? Yeah. Um. I think from like my perspective from it, it's like it's just really showing how like how the devil is just all he does is promote chaos within the world, like promote chaos within just our everyday lives and stuff. And you could see how, how like, if you really, you know, talk to Jesus, you could see how the difference it is like between God and the devil, like how much destruction like he can do. Yeah, very much so. Thank you. La soeur dit que cela montre comment le diable aime propager le chaos dans le monde et elle peut vraiment voir la, la différence entre, entre Dieu qui est un Dieu de paix et le diable qui est un Dieu de destruction. Bon, pas, pas un Dieu, mais un être de destruction. Anybody else? Quelqu'un d'autre? Oh, yeah. I definitely was listening to uh, the different ways the devil would uh, 
try to lead us to sin. And an interesting one that caught me was gambling, right? It wasn't always this way, if you guys remember, but like gambling is something that is been pushed in 2023, 2023 and 2024. It wasn't like this in 2022. I feel like if anyone noticed that, like I definitely hear it, see it in ads a lot. Yeah, 100%. Et le frère a dit que euh, il a ce qu'il a remarqué c'est euh, pas camping euh, les jeux les jeux où, où les gens misent euh, misent de l'argent euh, que les jeux de chance la loto et les jeux comme ça ça a vraiment euh, pris, pris pris beaucoup de personnes en ces dernières années beaucoup de gens font comme ça et, et ce n'était pas comme ça avant que vraiment euh, l'influence du, du diable euh, est en train de jouer dans cela. Yeah. And as we are walking, all these pitfalls, there are all these things that are going to be there to try to distract us. So that is what we're going to try to take a look at today and try to circumvent. Donc, ce soir, nous allons parler euh, de euh, tous ces freins, tous ces, euh, tous ces pièges qui, euh, qui sont sur la route quand nous voulons marcher avec Dieu. So taking into account the first part, he says that if I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. And with the wisdom of the serpent, I would whisper to you, do as you please. Donc, la première partie, euh, la personne dans la lecture a dit que il, il était le diable. Il allait commencer par euh, chuchoter euh, des choses aux gens. Le, le dit que il, il peut faire ce qu'il veut. The first pitfall that I want to highlight is doing as we please. Donc, le premier pièce que j'aimerais euh, montrer, c'est que nous pouvons faire ce que nous voulons. Doing as we please is essentially the contrary to obedience, the contrary to submission and humility. Donc, faire comme bon nous plaît, c'est euh, le contraire à, à, à l'obéissance et à l'humilité. And it only brings about destruction. If we turn to Mark chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Et ça amène seulement à la destruction. Si nous ouvrons uh, Mark. Yeah, Mark chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Okay. Uh, Mark uh, chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Mm -hmm. Whoever is there can go ahead and read it. I can read it. Thank you. Mark 7, verse 21 to 23. Mm -hmm. It says, For from within, out of a person's heart, comes evil thoughts, sexual immoralities, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lust, full desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these vile things come from within. There are what defiles you. So, Demian, can you tell me what does reading that verse tell you about doing what you want? Doing what we want is going to lead us to sin because our human nature in, is sinful. Mm -hmm. Donc, après avoir lu ça, la question est qu'est-ce que euh, nous pensons que euh, ce verset a à voir avec euh, faire ce que nous voulons? Et la soeur a répondu en disant que euh, si, si nous faisons ce que nous voulons, ça va nous, nous conduire au péché. Parce que euh, le cœur de l'homme euh, aime le péché. Yeah. And so it, we find it to be extremely easy sometimes to just do as we want to please or hearing all the time, like be free, be you, just do like, do as you want. Donc nous écoutons ça tout, tout le temps. Euh, euh, soyez libre, faites, faites ce que vous voulez. Like a lot of times, people are like, "Oh yeah, no, it's free will. Like it's because there's free will. You know, go ahead, just, just go ahead and do whatever." Non, nous écoutons les gens dire que nous avons le libre arbitre, euh, aller et faire tout ce que vous voulez faire. But doing so, we see that when we are giving into our own human nature and doing as we want, it is born of all these negative things: greed, malice, deceit. So we're not able to practice obedience to God and what he wants us to do. Mais nous voyons que si nous faisons ce que nous, nous voulons, euh, 
de la sorte de toutes ces choses qui sont nommées dans le verset. Et ça, ça fait que nous ne pouvons pas obéir à la volonté de Dieu. Not only that, but doing what we want is the opposite of humbling ourselves to God. Pas seulement ça, mais faire ce que nous voulons, c'est le contraire de, de euh, euh, être humble et, et se mettre sous la volonté de Dieu. And so we're going to go and read in um, Matthew chapter 23, verse 12. Donc nous allons lire dans uh, Matthieu 23, verset 12. And if somebody finds it, they can go ahead. Should I read it or wait for someone else to read it? Um, you can read it. Okay. Matthew 23, verse 12. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. So when it comes to that, when we refuse to humble ourselves, and instead we put ourselves above, we see that the contrary of what we believe is going to happen is what's going to happen. Donc, quand euh, nous refusons d'être humbles et, 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 et nous faisons dans ce que nous voulons, euh, quand il repite des lasse pas, the what contrary happens? of what we believe is going to happen will happen. So, they said that if you exalt yourself, you'll be humbled. But if you humble yourself, you will be exalted. Yeah. Donc, si nous restons humbles, alors le contraire de ce que nous pensons va arriver. C'est ça qui va arriver. Parce que le verset dit que euh, ceux qui sont humbles, c'est eux qui seront exaltés. So now my question to us for us to answer is how can we submit ourselves to God practically? Non, ma, ma question est comment est-ce que nous pouvons nous soumettre pratiquement euh, à Dieu? And for me personally, um, at the moment is being more open to speaking about God and evangelizing like the way that he wants me to. So in my spaces, I want to submit myself to God by evangelizing more. Donc pour moi, personnellement, me soumettre à Dieu, c'est me mettre à parler de Dieu aux gens, à être ouvert à propos de ma foi avec Dieu. Et à... And when you guys are giving these answers, I want you guys to remember practically. So these are things that I want, that you guys can be able to actually apply from now on going forward. Et quand vous répondez, je veux que vous pensiez à des choses que vous pouvez uh, appliquer pratiquement dans votre vie. Fear, how, how can you submit yourself to God practically? Mm, the number one thing that comes to mind is just doing my household chores uh, humbly, you know, uh, There's always the tops clean and dishes to do and things I'm like, sometimes in the flesh, I'm like, man, I see you should do it. But to really be humble, I'm like, let me just do this. That's something I'm working on still. Thank you. So, yeah, to just do the work humbly for the Lord. That's what I think for myself. Le frère a répondu en disant que euh, faire les travaux de maison, que euh, si s'il si fait ça humblement, au lieu de penser que quelqu'un d'autre va faire ça, mais quelqu'un d'autre n'a qu'à faire ça, si si euh, il, il reste humble et, et il fait ses travaux, euh, pour lui c'est euh, une, une façon de se soumettre euh, à Dieu. Uh, somebody else? Quelqu'un d'autre? And Lamar, about you, what can you do to, uh, what can you do? How can you submit to God humbly? Mm, that's, that, that's a tough question. Uh, I guess you need to first know what God wants from you. So, mm -hmm. uh, in the Bible, knowing what God wants you to do and not to do and doing your best to, um, To follow those okay but deeper than that for you personally right what are some things that you feel like you are not doing yet for god like what do you think like what is a practical example and something in your life that you feel like god wants you to do that you're not doing to the full extent that you can i guess uh evangelizing uh 
talking to people about my faith and how to be safe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now are you willing to do that more often throughout this year? Uh, yeah, if I get the chance. Well, okay. Well, you know, whenever you're willing, God will always provide you with a chance. So thank you. No, and uh, so la question m'a été aussi demandée et j'ai répondu en disant que uh, l'évangélisation que c'est quelque chose que uh, Dieu Dieu veut que je fasse mais bon je n'ai je n'ai pas je me je, je ne me suis pas appliqué à cela uh, je le frère m'a demandé si je vais m'appliquer à cela durant cette année et j'ai répondu en disant que si Dieu me donne la chance and now continuing Paul Harvey says to the young, I would whisper the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what is bad is good, and what is good is square. Uh, donc, dans la lecture, la personne a continué en, en disant que si il était le diable, il allait dire aux jeunes gens que uh, la Bible n'est qu'un myth, que ce qui est bon est, est en fait and like going on that kind of um what you know that that is the second pitfall pride the enemy of humility et uh, continuant sur sur cela le deuxième piège c'est l'orgueil l'ennemi le, de l'humilité the enemy uses pride in a way to get us to you start the natural order to believe that truth is a lie and lies are true. L'ennemi utilise l'orgueil pour nous faire penser que uh, pour nous faire accepter un mensonge. It que, wants to, que ce qui est bien est mauvais, ce qui est mauvais est bien. It wants to turn creation to creator. Il veut changer uh, ce, uh, la créature uh, pour le créateur. And we see in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12 to 15. And we see in Isaiah 14, uh, what verses? Verses 12 to 15. Verses 12 to 15. Isaiah 14, 12 to 15? Yes, 12 to 15. Mm -hmm. Somebody can go ahead and please read that for us. Should I read it? Uh, somebody else, please. So. Okay. I'll read uh, it. Thank you. Is this the one on the screen? Yes. Okay. Um, How you have fallen from heaven, morning stars, sun of the dawn, you have been cast down to the earth. You, you who once laid low the nations, you said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly on the utmost heights of Mount Zephon, I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high, but you are brought down to the realm of the dead, to the depths of the pit. Thank you. So we see here that Lucifer got kicked out for trying to take the place of God out of a place of pride. And now yeah. he would like to do the same with us. And now we see that Lucifer has been rejected by God because he has tried to take uh, la place de Dieu par orgueil et il essaie de faire la même chose avec nous. In, in our walks, if we walk with pride, sometimes we tend to circumvent what are fundamental truths. Uh, dans nos marches avec Dieu, si nous marchons avec uh, orgueil, nous pouvons uh, échanger uh, ce qui est faux pour ce qui est vrai. And then occasionally it causes us to question like certain things about what we have learned about God's nature. Et cela peut nous causer uh, de mettre en question ce que nous connaissons à, à propos de la nature de Dieu. Do you, does anybody here know what the book of Enoch is? Uh, Est-ce que quelqu'un ici sait ce que c'est ce que, que le livre uh, d'Enoch? Or have heard about it or something. 
like that. Ou bien vous avez écouté parler de ça. I've heard about it. You heard about it? Can you tell us what, what it is? Um, I, I, apparently it was a book written by uh, Enoch. Uh, mm -hmm. the, I think it's about uh, the time between uh, Adam and, and Noah. It has details about, about that time, how uh, apparently angels or sons of, of God used to, to live among humans on, mm -hmm. on earth. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So apparently, it's, it's uh, there's no book, and recently, everybody or a lot of people have been saying, "Oh yeah, the Book of Enoch is part of the Bible. It was taken out of the Bible." That no, no. If you haven't read the book, you haven't read the complete Bible. Uh, donc, euh, récemment, les gens disent que le livre d'Enoch est, est, est parti de la Bible. Que si tu n'as pas lu le livre d'Enoch, c'est que tu n'as pas lu toute la Bible. And these are things that we have to be wary of because. The Bible literally tells us that no word can be taken or added. So now when there's things like this being sprouted about, it has negative connotations. People start confusing their walks. Donc nous devons faire attention parce que la Bible nous dit que rien ne doit être enlevé ou ajouté à la Bible. Donc quand nous commençons à apprendre euh, des choses comme ça, ça peut euh, mettre en danger notre marche avec Dieu. Not only that, but sometimes we take a look at science that tells us that, yeah, no, that there was no creator, that everything was just there. Et si nous voyons aussi la science, euh, nous avons dit que, ah, que il n'y a pas eu de, de créateur, euh, tout a, a juste euh, toujours été. When we start allowing ourselves to be carried by our pride, we start stray, straying away from what is true. Uh, si nous commençons pas nous laisser emporter par notre orgueil, nous allons uh, commencer par nous détacher uh, de ce qui est vrai. And in order to combat that in our walks, we must know what are some fundamental truths. Et, et pour savoir comment nous, battre, nous, nous défendre contre cela, nous devons savoir quelles sont les vérités fondamentales. So to me personally, a fundamental truth to me is God is good. Donc, une vérité fondamentale pour moi est que Dieu est bon. So, no matter when somebody is like, oh, God is this good God, how does he last and what he get? I know personally at all times that God is good. And that's one of the fundamental truths that I always come back to. Donc, par exemple, si quelqu'un me demande uh, que si Dieu est, est si bon, alors pourquoi est-ce qu'il laisse de mauvaises choses arriver? Moi, je sais que la vérité est que Dieu est un Dieu bon. So, my question to you you guys know is in your walk what is the fundamental truth that you hold on to uh, donc ma question pour vous est uh, quelles sont les vérités fondamentales que uh, que vous avez bien que vous connaissez for me it would be um god is love god is love can you can you explain that um okay cuz so you see how the guy was talking about do I have to, okay i'll do it both ways like he was talking about how they're going to start like twisting certain things and stuff like mm -hmm. that um like so every morning i try to listen to kind of like this podcast of this guy like speaking and he says like um when we see in life now like it's more about selfishness and stuff like that and mm -hmm. like people are told to like you know cling on to themselves whereas before it would be like you would see other people showing each other love in some type of way yeah. and i think no matter what like god like we don't even in the smallest ways like no, like god just loves us so much and us living the life that we're living is because jesus christ died on the cross for us amen la soeur a répondu en disant uh, que, que, que pour elle elle sait que dieu est amour que uh, de nos jours les gens ils, uh, ils sont vraiment uh, uh, ils ne pensent qu'à qu eux-mêmes uh, mais ce n'est pas comme ça que Dieu nous demande d'être, euh, que la, la vie que nous avons, nous avons cela, parce que Jésus est mort euh, pour nous. Que ça montre vraiment que Dieu est amour. Mm, thank you. Somebody else? Quelqu'un d'autre? Pierre, si you're muted. Yeah, I would say number one is God is merciful. God is merciful. Uh, it says in Psalms 130, and I always remember this, that Lord 
if you who if you kept the record of sin, who could stand? Mm. But with you there is forgiveness, so that with reverence we may serve you. Amen. God's mercies are new every day, and we have our breath, every single breath mm. uh, is ordered by God. So I thank yeah. God for every breath that he's given me, even when I was rebellious against him. Yeah. Oh, Makes me always think of God's mercy. Thank you. That's my number one. Le frère a répondu en disant que euh, pour lui, une vérité, euh, une, sa vérité est qu'il il sait que euh, Dieu est miséricordieux, euh, que la Bible nous dit que Dieu euh, nous pardonne tous nos péchés et tous les souffles que nous poussons euh, viennent de lui. Donc, il, il remercie Dieu à chaque fois euh, pour sa vie. Thank you. So, continuing on with what Paul Harvey's, what he says, he says, and then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction, and I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. That brings us to the other pitfall. The next pitfall in your walk is distractions. Uh, no, so been, uh... Euh, au, au prochain piège euh, de notre leçon, c'est la distraction. Things that can captivate our attention. Les choses qui peuvent captiver nos attentions. So let us read 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Donc, euh, lisons 1 Pierre 5 verset 8. I'll go ahead and read it for us this time. It says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Be alert and of sober mind. Be focused. Don't get distracted, essentially, is what it is telling us here. Ah, de rester vigilant. Uh, uh, rester vigilant. Uh, ne pas être distrait. And Paul Harvey hits the nail on the head when he's saying that when the enemy is trying to attack us, He's going to try whatever to captivate our attention. Because the more we focus on God, uh, the more we focus on those things, the less we focus on God. Uh, et Paul Harvey, uh, l'auteur de ce papier, uh, il a raison en disant que uh, vraiment le diable essaie de nous distraire. Parce que quand nous sommes distraits, nous enlevons notre pensée de Dieu. What do you guys think are some of our biggest distractions today? Uh, Qu'est-ce que vous pensez sont les plus grandes de nos distractions de nos jours? I'm going to answer first. For me, it's streaming services. I know that I spend a lot of time watching like Netflix or YouTube or like Hulu. I spend a lot of time on that, me personally. Yeah. Pour moi, personnellement, c'est... Uh, 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 les les télévisions où, où on montre les, les, les films et les séries. Donc, et, et je passe beaucoup de temps uh, à regarder cela. Yeah, like, so so when I get my screen time, it'll be, like, over the course of the day, I spend, like, maybe an hour, two hours, three hours on, like, a streaming service versus my Bible, which I spent, like, 30 minutes on. Donc, uh, je vois que je passe uh, plusieurs heures à regarder uh, ce film et sa série au lieu, de, au lieu de lire la Bible. And so, my question to you guys now is, what distracts you guys the most? What are you giving a majority to, of your time to? Donc, ma question pour vous est, euh, qu'est-ce qui vous distrait le plus? Sur quoi est-ce que vous passez le plus de votre temps? What are you letting captivate your mind so that you are not alert? Qu'est-ce que vous laissez euh, captiver vos esprits pour, pour que vous ne soyez plus euh, éveillés? I'd like to start with Jeremy. I don't really have a ready answer. I was thinking more like, I was thinking like, maybe just leisure time, just too much leisure time. Too much leisure time? Yeah, like mm -hmm. maybe I should be just, 
just being lazy, I guess. Yeah. Euh, le frère dis, a, a, a répondu en disant que euh, trop de temps, trop de temps libre, euh, la paresse aussi. Yeah, and it's funny that he says that because a lot of times we say that oh we're too busy to do this, we're too busy, too busy, too busy for God. But now even this one is like when we have a lot of free time, sometimes we don't even find ourselves filling it with God. Et cette réponse est intéressante parce que souvent nous disons que ah nous sommes trop 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 occupés pour faire ceci ceci pour Dieu, mais nous voyons que même quand nous avons le temps, nous, nous décidons de faire euh, autre chose. And I forget, was somebody defined busy as being under Satan's yoke? Et, et quelqu'un une fois euh, défini euh, être occupé comme euh, être sous euh, euh, le joug de Satan. To the point where we're not able to even give much time to God. Again, the devil using distractions, trying to take away our attention. Au point où nous ne pouvons même pas euh, passer du temps avec Dieu. Encore une fois, so, c'est le diable qui essaie de nous, euh, en, euh, de nous détacher de Dieu. So throughout this week, the question is, throughout the day, whenever you go, I just want you all to continuously ask yourself, what am I letting distract me? Like, when you're spending time on something, have I spent too much time on this? How much time have I spent with God today? Am I like giving enough time to God? Like just reflect and ask yourself these questions throughout the throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the whole year. Donc, durant la semaine, durant euh, toute l'année, j'aimerais que euh, nous, pu nous puissions nous demander à chaque fois euh, combien de temps est-ce que nous passons à, à, à faire euh, ce que nous faisons et euh, combien de temps euh, est-ce que cela est comparé au temps que nous passons euh, avec Dieu. Going back to Paul Harvey, he continues and says, if I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves. Continue avec le papier. Paul Harvey a dit que si j'étais le diable, je ferais que les familles soient en guerre avec eux-mêmes. Churches at war with themselves. Les familles en guerre avec elles-mêmes. Churches at war with themselves. Les églises en guerre avec elles-mêmes. Nations at war with themselves. Et des nations en guerre uh, avec elles-mêmes. And all of this until each in turn is consumed. Et tout ceci jusqu'à ce que uh, et tous ils soient consumés. Next pitfall in your walk with God: lack of unity. Uh, le prochain uh, piège uh, dans notre marche avec Dieu: uh, le manque d'unité. On Sunday, even, we talked about how beneficial it is when people come together with a common goal. Uh, le dimanche, nous avons parlé de uh, comment avantageux cela est si les gens se mettent ensemble avec uh, un but commun. And the verse for this is Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Et le verset pour cela, c'est uh, Matthieu 18, verse 19. And while we're pulling that up, can somebody pull up 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10 to 11? Uh, et quand nous montrons cela, est-ce que quelqu'un peut voir uh, un Corinthien? 1 Corinthians? Chapter 1, verse 10 to 11. 1 uh, Corinthians, uh, chapter 1, verse 10 et 11. What, what was the verse in Matthew again? The first one is Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Okay. And it talks about the importance of unity. Donc, on va parler de l'importance de l'unité. Uh, somebody, please go ahead and read. Anybody? The, 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 the verse in Matthew. Somebody can go ahead and please read. Yeah, it says, again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, It will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. And then, can somebody uh, read the, the second verse? That's 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse, uh, verse 10. 10. To, yeah, 10 to Or mainly verse 10 even. That's the one that I want us to focus on. Uh, 
um first corinthians 1 verse 10 says i appeal to you dear brothers and sisters by the authority of our lord jesus christ to live in harmony with each other that there be no division in the church rather be of one mind united in a thought and purpose yeah like we see here like the importance of unity the importance of togetherness you know on sunday we talked about the tower of babel or babel donc, euh, nous verrons aussi l'importance de l'unité. Euh, le, le dimanche, nous avons parlé de euh, la tour de Babel. How, like, when these people were building, they were all united, God himself was like, yeah, no, if these people keep doing this, I can't stop them. Donc, nous, nous avons vu que euh, quand ils étaient en train de construire cette tour euh, et ils étaient unis, Dieu même a dit que si ils sont unis comme ça, là, ce, ce n'est pas bon. Je dois mettre euh, un arrêt à cela. And we saw how he confused the languages to in order to incite division. Et nous avons vu comment Dieu a confus le langage euh, pour mettre euh, la division. And that same way we see that the enemy tries to incite division amongst families, amongst churches, amongst nations. Et de la même façon nous voyons que l'ennemi veut mettre la division euh, dans les familles, dans les, euh, dans les églises et dans les nations. Remember what I'm reading here, Paul Harvey said in 19, um, I believe it was 1965. Uh, and, and in today's day, we see all the problems of school shootings, all the, the polarization of political parties, how divided and ununited the so-called United States is. Uh, et, et nous voyons comment aujourd'hui nous, nous écoutons parler de, uh, um, de comment les enfants tirent dans les écoles et, et, et comment uh, les États-Unis, uh, uh, leurs partis politiques sont, sont si divisés. And the biggest thing I also see is that we add on to some of this lack of unity with our own stubbornness. Et le pire est que nous ajoutons uh, à cette division par avec notre propre uh, entêtement. Sometimes we refuse to try to see from some point of view. We believe that what we say, what we learn is what is right. We refuse to listen and understand how others feel. Uh, nous refusons d'écouter uh, et d'essayer de comprendre comment est-ce que les autres se sentent. Nous disons que uh, ce que c'est ce que nous disons. Il n'y a pas d'autre. Uh, I remember... Growing up, the thing that frustrated me the most was that sometimes in within my family, it felt that my voice wasn't heard. Non, je me rappelle une chose qui me frustrait beaucoup quand quand j'étais petit, et que dans ma famille, quand je parlais, je pensais que les gens ne m'écoutaient pas. And I remember getting so mad because I was talking to my dad about something, and he'll be like, "No, you're wrong. No, you're wrong," without even me being able to voice my opinion. Et et quand je parlais, on me disait, euh, non, tu es, tu es incorrect. Euh, et, et les gens n'écoutaient pas mon, mon opinion. And as, like, time has gone by, and that, that definitely led to division. But as time has gone by, my father and I, we both have been able to have conversations and both come to common understanding because we recognize the importance of not being stubborn. Uh, et cela, uh, avait, cela se met à la, la division, mais avec le temps, uh, mon père et moi, nous avons uh, commencé à nous comprendre. Nous avons vu que uh, nous devons uh, respecter le point de vue de chacun. And so, it comes to that place as us two in our walks, we have to start reflecting on what can we be more understanding about? What can we listen to more? Where in our lives are we filled by some sort of stubbornness that is not of God? Dans, dans, dans chacune de nos vies, nous, nous devons penser uh, à comment est-ce que nous pouvons être plus, uh, plus compréhensibles. The more that we try to stay rooted in our own beliefs and not hear about others, that's going to create more unity. And if we think that we're doing a good thing, we're not, because that is honestly the devil using our stubbornness for his own gain. Uh, le plus nous nous entêtons dans, dans nos propres uh, opinions sans, uh, sans considérer les autres, le plus uh, de là, ce, cela va nous, nous détacher 
thought that and this is not that. to say that one's opinion is wrong or right but this is to say that there is communication that is to be had there is conversation that is to be had in order for people to come to understanding cela ne veut pas dire que euh, nos, nos opinions sont correctes ou bien incorrectes, mais euh, nous devons communiquer, être capable de parler pour pouvoir euh, amener les gens euh, à pouvoir venir et comprendre ce que nous disons. And so for this, the question that I want you all to reflect upon is, what are some things can I be more understanding of? Or how can I be a voice of reason in my own community? Donc, ce sur quoi j'aimerais que euh, nous, nous pensions, euh, et, et comment est-ce que je peux être plus, plus, plus compréhensif euh, ou bien euh, comment est-ce que je peux être euh, une, une, une voix de raison dans ma communauté and then Paul Harvey continues by saying if I were the devil I would encourage schools to refine young intellects but neglect to discipline emotions et Paul Harvey a continué en disant que si j'étais le diable euh, je vais encourager les écoles à, à, à raffiner euh, les, les étudiants qui sont intelligents. What was the, the last part? Neglect to discipline emotions. Et, et négliger de discipliner les émotions. Just let those run wild until before you know it, you'd have drug sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Uh, uh, je, uh, il faut juste laisser les, les enfants faire ce qu'ils veulent. Mm -hmm. et, et dans peu de temps, vous aurez euh, des chiens pour détecter les drogues et, et, et des machines pour détecter les armes à feu sur les enfants dans, dans les écoles. And I feel like this one is a big one that the devil tries to attack is emotional maturity, emotions, upbringing. Et, et je pense que celui-ci euh, est un grand point que le diable euh, essaie beaucoup d'attaquer, c'est les émotions. Yeah, and when I was reading this, the verse that came to mind to really hit upon this topic is Matthew chapter 28, verse, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. Uh, et quand je lisais ceci, le, le verset qui m'est venu en tête, c'est uh, Matthieu 11, verset 28 à 30. And as they posted up, what I would like to say is that as youth, we are always overburdened with a lot of these emotions, you know? Like, there's a lot of things that come and go that we're thinking of. We even see in this generation, depression rates are at all-time high, suicide rates are at a high. There's all these things that come up that we deal with emotionally. Oui, could you repeat the, uh, the first second? Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30. And so I was just saying that there's always all these emotions that we have, and a lot of time it goes pent up because we feel there's no place for us to 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 pour it out to. Donc, euh, je disais que euh, la plupart du temps nous avons beaucoup d'émotions, euh, et c'est et ces émotions restent concentré en nous parce que nous avons nous n'avons pas euh, de moyens de euh, euh, de les délâcher de de les faire sortir. But this verse brings me so much comfort because it says, "Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest." Euh, mais mais ce verset me donne de de la confiance parce que cela dit, venez à moi pour tout ce qui est fatigué, chargé, et je vous donnerai du du repos. And I really like what it, the 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 verse the version of French when it says chargé because it's like you're fully charged you're like like up to the top completely you got everything on you. Et j'aime beaucoup la version française qui dit chargé parce que vous êtes vraiment euh, chargé vous êtes juste que yeah. vous, vous, vous êtes complètement pris jusqu'au bout. And a lot of time because of that we'll see like with a lot of these shootings, a lot of like these suicides, like a lot of things that the enemy is using to attack us through all these emotions that do not have the proper output. Uh, et et nous voyons que euh, dans, dans plusieurs cas, euh, ces choses avec lesquelles le diable nous attaque, euh, euh, ces tirailles aux écoles et, et tout ça, euh, cela vient des émotions qui ne sont pas euh, contrôlées. In our walk, we have feelings of stuck, stagnation, insecurity, fear, not good enough, 
all of this. Euh, dans le marché avec Dieu, nous avons euh, des sentiments de euh, d'être coincé, de ne pas être assez bon, de, de ne pas faire assez. And as this is personal, the, I want you guys to reflect on, you guys don't have to say it out loud, but what are some of these feelings that you feel that you be holding on to? Like, what are some of these things that you feel that, like, you really haven't been able to let go of? Et j'aimerais que nous tous nous, pu nous puissions penser à quelles émotions euh, est-ce que nous avons, en, que quelles émotions est-ce que euh, nous, 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 nous portons avec, nous ne pourrons pas nous, nous en débarrasser. Because keeping that in is bad. And that's why even God is saying that. I understand it's going to be heavy. That's why I want you to give it to me and I will give you rest. I'm going to let you rest. Parce que garder et encaisser ces, ces émotions dans nos cœurs, c'est mauvais pour nous. C'est pour ça que Dieu même dit que si, si nous sommes chargés euh, de, de finir à lui et, et il nous donnera du repos. And I would also like to encourage saying that there's a bunch of ways. There's through journaling, You can find someone to talk to, prayer, surround yourself with love. There's just, there's a lot of ways in which God's rest is shown. Donc, j'aimerais nous encourager tous. Uh, il y a plusieurs façons dont uh, le repos de Dieu est, uh, est manifesté. Nous pouvons écrire dans un journal ou bien trouver un groupe de prière uh, pour prier avec nous. And so, continuing on to the next, continuing on to the next point, Paul Harvey has for us. Donc, continuons sur le, le, le prochain point de Paul Harvey. He says that within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing. I'd have judges promoting pornography. And soon I would evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. Donc, euh, il a dit que durant euh, une décennie, il y aura... Uh, les prisons qui sont remplies, il y aura les télévisions qui sont en train de, de promouvoir la pornographie et uh, what was the, uh, the last part? I would evict God from courthouses, schoolhouses and from Congress. Uh, et je vais chasser uh, les gens de Dieu, bien Dieu, uh, des cours de justice. In his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. Uh, dans, dans, dans les propres églises de Dieu, je vais changer uh, la foi, bien la croyance en Dieu ou la croyance uh, dans, dans la science. The trap here in our walk is the absence of God. Le, le piège ici uh, dans notre marche avec Dieu, c'est l'absence de Dieu. If the devil can separate us from God, then he's essentially succeeded. Separate us from relying on God and everything. Si le diable peut nous séparer de Dieu, euh, alors il peut facilement nous, euh, nous empêcher de, euh, de compter sur Dieu. So, what, what are some areas in your life that you are not giving to God right now, where God is absent? Donc, quelles sont euh, ces parties de vos vies où vous ne, vous ne comptez pas complètement sur Dieu? This one is a question again for us to answer. C'est une question pour, pour, nous, pour, pour que nous répondions. Um, anybody can go ahead and start us off. Can you repeat that, please? What are some areas in your life that you're not giving to God? Areas in which God is absent. Donc, la question, c'est quelles sont euh, les parties de nos vies que nous n'avons pas complètement données à Dieu, les parties où Dieu est absent. Personally, I'll start us off, I guess. For me, I think in uh, my friend choosing, I don't think that in all my choosing of my friends, am I always like, oh, God, no, um, is this a good friend? Should I make this person a friend, et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes I just go ahead and make them a friend, and then I see how that develops. Uh, non, le phrase que pour lui, pe pe personnellement, c'est quand uh, il parle français, uh, il... il... Bon, souvent, ils ne demandent pas à Dieu de l'aider à parler français, mais... Non, non, not, not French speaking, my friend choosing, like in choosing my friends. Oh, choosing your friends, OK. Mm -hmm. pas, 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 pas en parlant français, mais en, en choisissant euh, tes amis. Que ils ne demandent pas à, à Dieu euh, avant euh, de devenir ami avec quelqu'un. 
il juge qu'il s'approche de la personne et, et il devient ami. Yeah. So that's an area that I want to invite God in because I want him to be in all areas. Donc, c'est euh, une partie de sa vie où il aimerait inviter Dieu. Somebody else? I'll go. Thank you. Um, well, it's probably generic, but for me personally, it's like my fears and my worries. Um, and just every in my future overall, I feel like when... Like, I feel like when it comes to my fears and stuff and when I get anxious, I tend to try to solve the solution myself, like whatever problem is. I tend to run away from God and try to see if I could do it myself and see if my way could be better instead of going towards God. So that's something that I'm trying to work on and let him, like, just really submit to him fully. Non, la soeur a, a répondu en disant que euh, c'est son peur euh, et ses inquiétudes, que à chaque fois elle essaie de résoudre ses problèmes par elle-même, euh, qu'elle elle ne va pas demander à Dieu. Donc elle, elle essaie de, de faire ça plutôt, d'aller toujours demander à Dieu premièrement afin d'essayer euh, de résoudre ses, ses problèmes elle-même. Thank you. Somebody else? Quelqu'un d'autre? I'll go. Um... So kind of like Olivia, but for me, it's like emotion wise, like I'm somebody who like it takes me a lot to get angry. But when I do get angry, like I can kind of go from like chill to like snapping like pretty quick. Um, and I think a lot of times like when I'm like at that moment where I'm like heated, you know, like the natural human response is like kind of not get revenge but like don't let them like think they can just treat you like that and I think that's something that I really need to work on is just like just that whole like let go and let God handle it type of mentality instead of like really dwelling on it and you know when you dwell on it like your your anger obviously is gonna like keep rising and rising because you're like really um putting your attention on it and I think what I need to work on is just like once I'm like okay I'm like I'm done with it like actually be done with it and just like let God handle it like if the other person like wronged me in some way let God take care of it and you know not like hold that animosity towards that person or whatever uh, that's uh a répondu en disant que c'est ses émotions que par exemple il est euh a et difficile fois pour, pour, pour elle de d'être en colère mais quand mais quand ça arrive quand elle se met en colère euh, elle se dit que euh, elle ne veut pas que les gens pensent que ils peuvent la traiter n'importe comment donc ce qu'elle essaie de faire c'est euh, de laisser Dieu faire euh, laisser partir cette émotion et laisser Dieu prendre charge euh, de tout et s'occuper de tout yeah yeah and no that is True, and as we see here, like that is one of the biggest things that the enemy can pull off is that once he gets us to to abstain from God, to separate us from God, then like he essentially has victory because in God we have all this good and we have the answers to everything. But without him, then we're just a we're just a corpse. Donc c'est vraiment une chose que le diable essaie de faire que euh, une fois qu'il nous détache de Dieu. Euh, nous sommes juste euh, euh, un corps mort hein, sans sans Dieu et, et il peut faire ce qu'il veut avec nous. Yeah. So um one more time just for the sake of it, I'm going to read again this whole thing that we are reading today just for everybody to really hear it. And again afterwards I encourage you all to go listen to it and just really deep it. And Donc, uh, just yeah. Je vais lire le papier encore une fois et je nous encourage tous à à The paper uh, is called If I Were the Devil by Paul Harvey, written in, and it was a speech I gave in 1965. And again, for everybody to reflect this, it says, he says, if I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness, and I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population. But I wouldn't be happy until I seized the ripest apple on the tree. So I'd set about however necessary to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches, 
I begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you, do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth, and I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what is bad is good, and what is good is square. And to the old, I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which arts in Washington. And then I'd get organized. And I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. And I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each is in turn was consumed. And with the promise of higher ratings, I'd had mesmerizing, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions, just to let those run wild until before you know it, you'd have drug sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing and I'd have judges promoting pornography. Soon I could evict God from the courthouses, then from the schoolhouses, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbols of Easter and egg. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who want. And what do you bet I could get whole states to promote gambling? I can get whole states to promote gambling as a way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on the TV is the way to be, and thus I could undress you in public and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. So again, like as we read this, I told you guys, these are the traps that the devil uses for us to try to stray us off of our walk. Donc, ceci sont les pièges que... Le diable utilise pour essayer de nous détacher de notre marche avec Dieu. To recap, pride. Uh, donc, uh, pour premièrement, nous avons l'orgueil. Distractions. La distraction. The, the lack of unity. Le manque d'unité. Emotional maturity, emotional attacks. Uh, les attaques émotionnelles. Morality. La moralité. And the absence of God. Et l'absence de Dieu. And we talked, these are all things that the devil tries to get us with. And we also talked about ways in which we can circumvent that. Uh, ce sont la, les pièges que, uh, les attaques que uh, le diable utilise pour nous, nous, nous séparer de Dieu. Et nous avons aussi parlé de comment nous pouvons uh, les combattre. Thank you. I'm done for today. Merci, j'ai fini pour ce soir. Uh, I'll go ahead and give the place to the president and then after to the to, to after to pastor. And then we also have please don't leave after we have announcements. Uh, okay. wait, there's a Merci. question. Um, C'est vrai que là où je suis, je ne peux vraiment pas beaucoup parler. Euh, je suis, je dis vraiment bravo à Love pour ses recherches. C'est vraiment euh, d'actualité et très, très éducatif pour nous en tant que jeunes. Et je voudrais nous inviter en tant que jeunes à réécouter ce que nous venons d'entendre ce soir. Oh, sorry, translation, please. So, uh, where I am, I cannot really speak right now, but I would like to thank uh, God Love for... Uh... For, for uh, something that's going on right now. Uh, I encourage all of us to to hear this uh, preaching again. Et je crois que si nous pouvons écouter, réécouter, nous allons essayer de nous ajuster pour que, en tant que jeunes, nous puissions vraiment marquer notre temps et notre génération. Merci so, une fois encore, God love, que Dieu te bénisse abondamment pour ses recherches. Amen. Good job. Thank you. So if you can hear it and, and hear it again, uh, it will help us uh, make a difference as youth in our generation. Uh,
Non, il, non, il a dit qu'il a eu un empêchement. Donc, ok. Je vais laisser la parole à, à Dali. Après Dali, après nous avons Dali va faire la prière et nous allons clôturer. Merci. We also wait, have. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Also, wait. I see the question in the chat, and I'm going to note it down for next time so we can talk about that. Yeah, Olivia, do you have a question? No, but before um Pastor talks, I just I just wanted to say, um, it's not about the preaching, but, or should I wait until he's done? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Sorry, sorry, my bad. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. After you, you leave the, the lead to the pastor, okay? Okay. Go ahead, All please, right. thank you. Mm -hmm. so um basically three things the first thing is um molly put in the chat like a couple of weeks ago about everybody taking a turn to lead bible study um it can't only be love that do it every wednesday or molly that do it every wednesday but not only will this like i think this overall in general this will give like everybody a chance to explore like learning the word themselves and just seeing like testing their leadership skills and just teaching just present spreading God's message like within yourself and to other people so please when we're gonna make this document and we're gonna send it in a group chat later on this week and just try to pick a time that you think will work for you a date a Wednesday that you think will work for you to prepare for something That's first announcement. Second announcement is the pastor wants everybody to meet with him, to everybody find a time to meet with him, to have a meeting with him individually so that he can talk to you. So please find the time that you have and call the pastor later on during the week so he can also schedule you in. That's the second announcement. And the third announcement is it's becoming the end of the month and We're starting back to um, give money for the youth. So please contribute five, ten dollars, any amount just for the youth so we can really do something together and really plan something and be more spectacular this year. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Hello, uh, Hello. before the pastor will speak, I would like to invite all the youth. Next Friday, we have all night prayer. From 10 to 1 o'clock, you are invited. Please. Is it next Friday or this upcoming Friday? Oh, okay, this coming Friday. Please. All of you, you are invited. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, God love. May God bless you. And uh, I'm happy that uh, the announcement has uh, been made that uh, everybody has to prepare uh to get ready so that uh when it is your turn you also you will uh teach others uh i will uh be following you to see where you have some lacks and uh if uh, there is something uh, that needs to be done I can uh, assist. Uh, may God bless you and uh, let us pray and put uh, our meeting to an end. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you very much for uh, this opportunity. Thank you for uh, allowing us to come together to learn. I pray that uh, you will develop uh, all the youth so that uh, they can uh, take the lead in the future because they are the church of the future. They are the one who will uh, take over when uh, we are tired and we cannot uh, work anymore. Heavenly Father, I pray that uh, you develop uh, their skills. I pray that uh, when they are digging and they want to learn about uh, you they want to learn your word i pray that by your holy spirit you will help them you assist them father thank you for everything that you are doing i know that uh, you are not developing them uh, only for the church uh, but uh, you are developing them so that they can become uh, good uh, citizens in the world they can become uh, good leaders in the world 
and uh, in the world too. Father, thank you for everything. I pray that uh, you protect us. I pray that your angels will surround our houses, our beds, give us a sound sleep so that we can wake up tomorrow morning praising you. Receive all the glory for what you are doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pastor, okay, thank you. Amen. You, you have one question on the chat room. I don't know if you answered that question. Yeah, uh, I said I um, noted down the question and we'll review it next week. Okay. Bye bye. Yeah. Mm, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm.